Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Riff on This, Candid Conversations Behind the Music in Florida. And if you know anything about Florida or music, you know that this is a big old state and we have a ton of talent. But we're here for all of the juicy details and amazing stories flowing through all the genres in the Sunshine State. I'm your host, Samara Coquinas, taking a break from the weather to catch a musical vibe with you. All right, today I'm so excited because we have Miami in the building, an artist that has worked with some big time names, pretty big yourself, smiles official, so official. <laughs> Welcome to the set of Riff on This. Thank you for having me. I mean, you drove all the way from Miami just to come to my show, and I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you for having us. You know, I mean, that's the hustle, so. <laughs> Yeah, that is, that really is. So um, we're going to, of course, talk more about your album, your performances that you've done, the 25th anniversary concert in Atlanta, yeah. <laughs> um, some of the big names that you've worked with, including you know, Ricky Rose, Rick yeah. Ross, the Trina. Boss. Yeah, the <laughs> boss, exactly. Uh, we'll talk some more about T-Pain and, of course, everything that you're doing moving forward. Um, but I want everybody to really know who you are and where you're from and, and you know, how you grew up so tell us exactly i know you're from the 305 i see that dolphin yeah. jacket I had, I had to represent so i come to orlando i got it <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> all right so um, where i'm from i'm from color ridge it's um down south from miami um my heritage my my mom is haitian my dad is jamaican um and you know we're from like a part of Miami. You know I seen this um, City Girls interview the other day where they said like, "Oh, Dow South is in Dade County," which is completely false. Yeah, so, I was about to say, yeah, it is. So you know, <laughs> with the new project, I named it after where I'm from. I know we'll get into it later, but I named it from where I'm from because I'm trying to represent that side of town. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I think, you know, Dade County. There's Broward County, and then there's Miami Dade, yeah. and. That's all the South. Yeah. That's all the South. And remember, we're talking about the home of Uncle Luke, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> like, not, not a legend. Absolutely. Like Daddy. Yeah. yeah. Slip and slide, I believe, right, too? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of history there. You, you said your, your mother's Haitian, your father's Jamaican. So yeah. what kind of music did you listen to growing up in your household? Oh, I listened to a little bit of everything. We listened to more Jamaican stuff. I think we were like more, um, you know, I guess because it's my dad, we listened to more Jamaican stuff. But we also had, um, you know, compo. We played compo in the house. My dad listened to a lot of old school stuff, you know. Um, a lot of double Like plates. the stylistics and all types of old stuff that I shouldn't even know about. But No, you should. That is <laughs> No, I think that is a proper upbringing when you know music outside of your I know the time music frame. from all genres. i uh, got rock and roll playlists, R&B playlists, uh, you know, as much as I have rap and new stuff like that. You know? mm -hmm. True musician. I like that. I like that a lot. So, um, all right. We'll come back to taking a stroll down memory lane when you grew up and when you went to high school and stuff like that. But mm. <laughs> we're going to talk about how we met. Because <laughs> hey, there's a story. Everything happens for a reason. You can't make this up. I was confused. You... <laughs> Don't worry. Okay, so for everybody that doesn't know, and I know you know, yeah. um, I did a previous episode uh, with Smiles and South Star. Um and you are smiles, but your smiles official. Yeah. And I added smiles from Smiles and South Star on Instagram, thinking, oh, well, this is his Instagram because it's smiles official. <laughs> but I didn't notice there wasn't a Z at yeah. the end. And you followed me back. We I was like, oh, okay, this is him for sure. <laughs> and then I started sending you because I know Rodney, <laughs> and he's also Jamaican. <laughs> I started because I'm a clown. I'm a whole clown. I'm just going to let everybody know this. I am a whole entire clown. Um, me and my friends laugh. And I was a lot. laughing with you. Like, I'm glad oh. you were because this <laughs> next part is so cringy. I can't believe it. I send you. I sent you so many videos of like all these like funny Jamaican memes and and I'm randomly sending to you thinking that you're the Rodney Smiles from Orlando, yeah. not knowing it was you. And then one day I was looking and it was after the episode I had interviewed with Smiles and South Star and I start scrolling through my feed and I see Smiles official with Trina and I'm like, 
he didn't tell me he was doing something with Trina. What is this? <laughs> and I look and it was somebody different. It was you. Yeah. And my heart sank. <laughs> what were you thinking when you got those messages from me? Number one, they're, they're hilarious. They really yeah, are. Yeah, no, yeah. I just thought you were being funny. So I was like, okay. <laughs> Randomly just hey. selecting somebody to send it to Yeah, sending memes. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> and then I felt so bad. No, yeah, we're funny. I got like friends that send me Jamaican memes like all the time. Like we have like even group chats. So. I was so glad because when I messaged you, I was like, First off, let me just apologize. <laughs> and then I told you what had happened, and you were so cool about it. And yeah. I appreciate that so much for having such a good sense of humor because that's probably one of the most embarrassing ways I've ever met anybody. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Have you ever had an embarrassing... I mean, no, it's, it's kind of awkward, and I'm not going to lie. Like, I've, I've had plenty of embarrassing Have you? Moments. What's one that stands out to you? Um, well, I don't know. Can't say it off the rip. But you know, like you see somebody maybe somewhere you thought you seen them, I mean, you like call their name and tap them or something, yeah. and then Publix maybe, <laughs> and then they turn around and you're like, oh, my bad. Yeah, <laughs> no, I've had plenty of those too, but I think yours definitely was the top. Was oh. the icing, <laughs> the cherry, the sprinkles, everything on top because that was super embarrassing for me. But thank you for being so cool about it anyway. And now we're here. <laughs> You can't make this up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So going back, um, what is your first musical memory? Um, like as far as an artist or like just like. Anything. It could be music. some musical memory that you had with a family or a friend. As a kid or something. Mm -hmm. um, I know we used to. Um, <laughs> we used to be in the living room. My brothers are older. I got three older brothers. But we used to be in the living room dancing to like new edition. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, so did you Michael have the moves Jackson, down? We thought, we thought we had the moves down. Who were you? Who were they with? I don't know. You don't even know? I don't even know. <laughs> Velvet DeVoe or something. I don't know. Did you perform for your parents? <laughs> yeah, we used to do it for my parents and dads. Do all the little, do all the moves. And, you know, we thought we had it. I don't want to see it on video. <laughs> this is before... Uh, your phone, uh, like, yeah, before. people come over. My mom's like, "Oh yeah, I have it on camcorder." <laughs> camcorder. Like, like, no, 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 like, thank you. No. Don't bring that out. Nobody has a VCR, right? <laughs> exactly. Good. Keep it that way. <laughs> Get it converted, mom. <laughs> All right. So, when did you start really getting into music? I I know it started at a young age for you. Um. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of always into it. I was a DJ in high school, so. Uh, we were DJing, and then I would make music on the side. So, you know, it was, like, always something that was there. But I think my focus more back then was on football and, you know, trying to get to school with football and everything. So, um, you know, when I came home from playing college football, I said when I really started taking it more serious because, you know, I had more time on my hands, and it kind of replaced that love I had for football. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I started putting more of my effort, the same grind that I put into football and trying to get to college was the same grind that I put into into music. Nice. So when you when you were DJing in high school, what were you like at like a hall or was it like were you, how old like were you? house parties? House this parties. Is like, yeah, this like uh, I, I was gonna say a think, dance hall. You were doing dance halls. We started like freshman year. We would do like uh, we did some dance hall parties. We did a little bit of everything. Um, my first DJ set was so bad that um, the <laughs> you needed a knife to put in the mixer for the pocket knife to catch the <laughs> the crossfaders and. Um, yeah, it was all so broken up. Faded. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the wiring was crazy, but we rigged it. We made it work until I got better set. So Nice. You know, it was like me and my boys. We called ourselves Market Boys. So was <laughs> Market Boys. Market was that boys. your sound system? Um, <laughs> would you call it a sound, an official sound? <laughs> it, it, it worked. It did what it had to until yeah. we got a better set, you know, until I upgraded to the dead ends. And, the, you know, I got my stuff right. I had the CDJ dead ends. And you could scratch it. Go crazy. But, you know, like, actually, um, you know, I take this time to shout out um, Eddie and George, um, Quill, um, they're um, Daisy. He goes by Daisy now. They um, are called Paper Water, and they're EDM DJs now. So, wow. you know, we started from doing hip-hop and reggae and all of that. And now they're, you know, they're doing big clubs and venues, EDM, all over the country. So, wow. Know. That's funny. They I, stuck on the DJ thing and it worked for them. Yeah, humble beginnings. Yeah. Humble beginnings. <laughs> so um, what 
I know you said you've mentioned in in other interviews before that you had a and in a prior conversation with you at your you're fairly close with T Pain as well, right? Yeah. So when I had came back from college, like matter of fact, Smiles Official, the name comes from them. Okay. Because they made me get a Twitter. And at the time, you know, um, Smiles was taken, like just, you know, that's common. So uh, we made it Smiles Official. And then we were running into that issue with the Smiles and South Star thing where it was like the confusion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, T-Pain used to just always call me by my Twitter name. You know, he didn't know me well back then. So it was just, hey, Smiles Official, Smiles Official. And then the whole crew started calling me Smiles Official. You know, uh, you got Young Cash and Tay Dizzle and, and, and One Chance and everybody over there is now calling me Smiles Official and it just stuck. So it was like an easy transition. The Twitter was already Smiles Official. And, you know, I've been playing off it ever since. That's too funny. So all because of Twitter, a Twitter yeah, handle. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, you also did some street dream stuff, right? Yes, with um, Lex Promo. Um, back in high school, so when I was doing all that DJ stuff, I had many hats back then. So, mm -hmm. so you know, I used to uh, street team and for doing high school to get paid, you know, X amount of dollars to just, you know, go with my boys and pass out flyers on the beach or wherever it was popping and hit the strip, you know. And what a gig. Yeah, you know, and, it, and we, would, we would go to Slip and Slide and pick up the stuff or Lex had an office on the beach at the time. And we would go pick up the stuff, go hand it out, come back, you get your check, you know, it was, it was cool, you know, but it also gave us access, you know, at the time I was able to see professional artists, they were always in and out of slip and slide. And, you know, sometimes you're, sometimes you get rewarded because you did that work. And now, you know, you know, you're in a club that you probably not old enough to be in, but <laughs> you're with these stars, you know, and like, I got to see them move from an early age and it. I guess it made it real for me also, you know, because I seen that it was really possible. Yeah. How did it make you um, approach being an artist? Did it make you move a little bit differently than, than you know, people that you see coming and that are new on the scene and are kind of like jumping at every opportunity they get? I think it gave me a head start because I got to see how they professionally move. So there were certain things that I, you know, I mean, obviously everything in life is trial and error, but mm -hmm. there were some things that I didn't have to trial and error with because I knew I was like, this is exactly what they do or this is who they use to do this or to get that done. And I had some connections and stuff like that. So I was able to use things I learned mm -hmm. from before I was an artist. So but being a DJ and your street team gave you the marketing and the music skills you needed to become who you are in essence. Yes. Or to develop yourself. Hey, everything, way. everything comes full circle. It, it really does. <laughs> you it know, really even, even the football, like football, you know, uh, a lot of it, like, you know, at the time it's about football, but overall it gives you like life lessons you know mm -hmm. so it's like it's really like sometimes you realize coach isn't really talking about football he's teaching you how to be a man yeah so. uh, sports do that they really do and they it's a structured environment and it's really a, a good environment for people yeah, to teachers you know teaches kids perseverance really absolutely yes. what team did you play for what college team um, I played at Miami Sunset and then I went up to Massachusetts and I played for Ooh, that's Becker cool. College yeah Becker College okay so, uh, that's up near... Um, and Worcester. Oh, okay. Delmarva Peninsula area, right? Yeah. Like, okay, okay, okay. I know a little bit about that. Not a lot. But in the, <laughs> we're, we're like 30 minutes from, from Boston. Boston, okay. So we would go in and hang out at UMass. And I had a couple friends that were going to different schools up there. So like we would visit each other's campuses. Nice, nice. Um, so uh, in the process of you, you came, you came out in 2016 with I Got a Bag and you have a lot of more. I have a lot more uh, <laughs> songs to talk about. But I Got okay. a Bag was kind of one that was really a big player for you. Right. That that one like started. It really set everything off. I, I think that one made the industry take me serious because it, it, it was um, it was like the first one to go in rotation on radio, like not just get played here and there, sprinkled in mix shows. Mm -hmm. It like went into full rotation on very big, you know, radio stations. And we were actually getting media based reports and, and like things got very real for us. We got 
calls from labels and, and emails from labels and started stepping in rooms we had never been in before. So wow. I think it made the whole city of Miami take us serious. You know? mm -hmm. When you were stepping into these rooms with labels, what were some things that you were hesitant about, like with signing? Um, so, so me and, um, you met Travis, mm -hmm. me and Travis, uh, my business partner, we've always educated ourselves on the game. I think it's very important that all artists do, but we've always been like students of the game. We've studied, we've watched, you know, the documentaries about the bad deals and taking the bad deals. We do our homework. We have our entertainment lawyer. So we're not in a rush to, you know, um, mess ourselves up or take the wrong deal. You know, I, it, to me, you could be patient and work a little harder and get the deal you deserve, so. Absolutely, you guys came out with your own label, correct? Yes. What's the name of that? Streets Enterprise. Streets Enterprise. I'm the streets, he's the enterprise. Okay, <laughs> I can see that, I, okay, <laughs> I got you, I got you, I like that, I like that. Um, so was it because of, you know, when you saw how the industry was at a young age, is that what drove you guys to, do, to, to come up with your own label and kind of go from there? Um, or was it more of like a, Co yeah, we always had like other artists we worked with too, so like we had them on the label. Mm -hmm. uh, Travis always like had a plan that we would have our own infrastructure, you know, like we would have our own our own thing, you know, and sign it to sign it to a label, you know, sign gotcha. to directly to the major. Like we want it to be the slip and slide, or the p next Pope Boy, or you gotcha. know, strong arm. That's what we want. We the best. We want it to be that and cash money signed directly to a, a bigger label. You know. Got you. Okay, that's interesting. 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 Um, so I got a bag. It was 2016, and then I know you did Bands in the Trap with Tory Lanez. Yeah. Um, now you have So Sexy with Trina, the Queen. The yes, Queen. The Queen of Man. Yes. Um, and another one um, that I really like was uh, Mental Health on your album. Um, go ahead and talk about your album and what it was kind of like working with these artists. Um, and then we'll also talk about some of the tours that you, well, not touring, but the uh, performances that you've done with a okay. lot of these names too. All right, so Bands in the Trap. So I got a bag, I feel like it put us here. Bands in the Trap took us here. You know, I think it was like the the biggest artist I worked with um, up to that time. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest artist I worked with up to date. Um, and, you know, like the relationship, people would see us out together. And, you know, we were building a relationship. The record did really good. It charted top 40 on urban radio. Uh, you know, it was charting on media base. So it did really good. So uh, the video was on BET. Um, it's the first time I had a video on YouTube hit a million streams. It was it got to two million streams very fast on on Spotify, and now I think it's like over four million. So it was like the most successful record. I like started breaking personal records for me. And um, when you're seeing those numbers go up and up and up, what is your feeling? Like, what were you feeling at that point? Were you kind of like in disbelief or what? Like, <laughs> what is this really happening? I'm a little weird, like I'm a workaholic. So yeah. it's like never enough, I'm like never satisfied. Like, uh, even when other people are celebrating, like, yeah, you did good. I'm like, yeah, but we gotta get here. I, nice. I just, I don't know, it's the way I am, so. You no, know, that's it definitely, you know, going, moving forward is always, but just don't forget to celebrate. Yeah, we celebrate the moment celebrate and I'm like, then I'm like, all right, now we need another million. Let's go get it. <laughs> let's go. I want yes. eight million tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, let's get it, 10 million, that's the next goal. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, you're talking about bands in the trap. That one was kind of that was another real big heavy hitter for you. And then you started working with um, like Trina recently, and so sexy, such a dope, dope song. Song, I really, Thank you. really you vibe to it. I feel like you can you can almost listen to that at the beach, a pool, a party, you know. But you can also listen to it in your car on the way home to keep you out of that mindset of you know um, what's it called road rage yeah <laughs> yeah uh trina the trina record was to me that one's very special because like i said i worked with lex promo and you know that to me that's again one of those things that came full circle because it's like i had been around her for so long like you know i had passed out her flyers 
held sections in the club. <laughs> like, you know, and then I've been around her so many times that I remember always like reintroducing myself mm. <laughs> until she finally had to tell me like, Smouse, I know who you are. Like, oh, that's good though. Like, Stop it. Like, <laughs> but you know, like I remember always telling her like, yeah, you know, I used to work at Slip Aside. I worked with Wendy and Lex and I used to pass stuff until she had to tell me to stop. Like, I, I know who you are. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, working with Rory, uh, her assistant, he's also on um, Love and Hip Hop with her and things like that. He kind of like helped strengthen that relationship. And, and you know, now it's like we're a family. So that one was special for me because it's like all the work paid off. And now, you know, I and she's a legend. So, yeah. you know, especially to us in Miami, us, you know. I think I think Florida. In that, that's general. our Beyonce. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Texas has Beyonce. We, we definitely have, have trainers. Yeah, no, I remember you know listening, just all of the music, and I mean, you just they're all bangers, yeah. all the songs. And when, and when you're on these concerts and stuff, and we go to these concerts with her or whatever, and you see like the crowd react and they're singing every word it's like chilling like gives you chill because it's mm -hmm. like bro her and then her and trick come together it's like it's just legendary yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that and i mean and seeing it from your perspective and then working with them and after yeah. knowing them for so working alongside them for so long i'm yeah. sure that was i gotta it. send a message trick i need mine too I need my <laughs> exactly trick you next hey listen <laughs> listen you next um and that actually, you have a video coming out for that one, right? Yes. That one's getting ready to drop later this it's, year. Yeah, it's gonna drop. Yeah, it's gonna drop soon. Drop soon. Okay. And what do you What do you like the most about the video? Can you give us a little hint? That Benji shot it. Oh, your photographer. Ben Benji did. filmed it. Wow. If it's not okay. shot by Benji. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just to let everybody know, because they can't see Offset, he's sitting right over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the movie maker. Movie maker. Guy. If y'all seen the Tory video, the bands in the trap, then y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay. This guy makes movies. Nice, nice. Um, mental health. I really like that song a lot. Um, but you know, the late prodigy, uh, prodigy said, um, "Hip hop is our therapy." Yeah. What's your message? Mental health is actually, you know, I know a lot of people listen to it and that's not, they were like from the title and then what I said on it, they're like, that's not what I expected you to talk yes. about. Yes. Like you flipped that. And mm -hmm. I, I did it because, um, and not so much like my generation, like I feel like J. Cole's generation, when he made that song Middle Child, mm -hmm. kind of like where I'm like in between like the older generation of the trick and the Trina and them. And then I'm still like young enough to be hip to Kodak Black and you know, like the, the younger generation is like, um, I'm, I'm right there in the middle so I can understand both. But there's things like I see in the youth where it's like they use the mental health as an excuse. And it's like, nobody feels sorry for you. Like nobody's coming to save you. So you gotta stop using these excuses and use them as fuel to the fire to go grind and get out of that situation. And, and then, you know, I'm also talking about how a lot of the youth, they're using drugs, which is, you know, so I say it's like self-inflicted mental health because you were fine before you let this drug take over your life. And now you have real mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So it's like you self-inflicted it on yourself. You weren't born like that. So I feel like a lot of people are using mental health and abusing the word as an excuse, you know? And we do know people that have real mental health or they have to take pills to be good every day or doctors prescribe stuff. But there's a lot of people abusing that as an excuse to not put one foot in front of the next and, you know, right. and, and do what they have to do to better their situation. And on the same same note, like you mentioned, there are people who, you know, are proactively using, you know, therapy and self-care and mm -hmm. actually acknowledging their own problem and yeah. speaking about it. And a lot of rappers are doing that. Yeah. Um, so I think that's important, too, to distinguish between those two things. Yeah, just, you know, and, and that's why I just... I made that because to me, there's a lot, there was a lot of people to me at the time and it was an issue. Like you said, music is our therapy. It was an issue between me and, and friends and people around. And it was like a common thing, even family. Like it was a common thing that was happening over and over again. And it was like, I didn't feel bad for these people in particular because it's like you did it to yourself. 
and you're still doing it to yourself and then you're using it as an excuse. So I, I, I don't feel bad for you. I feel bad for somebody who really has an issue or something traumatic touch them that may, you know, them slip into a dark place. I feel bad for you. But, you know, if, if you're doing it to yourself. Like, and as a parent, I mean, that's got to kind of really hit a little bit harder, too, whenever you're seeing, you know, teenagers, um, you know, in that situation, that very situation and already used in drugs. I mean, this is Florida. Yeah. Florida is very popular. The nation has just been one of those things you can't go anywhere without seeing drugs somewhere or another yeah. or in the news, one or the other. Um, has it made your kind of focus change a little bit, especially when you think about your family life? Um, as a parent, uh, my daughter, every day before she goes to school, we do affirmations, you know, like stuff that I seen on Instagram that I, I thought was very positive. Mm -hmm. So we do the same thing, me and her mom. We make her say, you know, I am smart. I am beautiful. You know, stuff like that. And she says, it, I'm confident. Stuff like that. She repeats it before she goes to school. And we kind of, we keep her a baby. You know, I know a lot of kids now are a little more grown than they should be. We keep her a baby. She doesn't listen to our music. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't dance like a adult. Like mm -hmm. she, she dances like a child, you know? No, yeah. Preserve the and childhood for as long as you, as long I, as I'm, gonna I tell you right now, I'm old school. She's in bed by eight o'clock. <laughs> I, I was the same way. And my kids, um, you know, when they were younger, I mean, they're in the twenties now. Mm -hmm. Um, but when they were younger, they didn't play the video game during the week. They did their homework or they could go outside and they had chores to do. Um, but they were in bed at 8 and 9 o'clock, depending on their age. Um, and my son doesn't listen. But <laughs> he what? I said, my son doesn't listen, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, a boy thing. I had two boys. It's a, it's a boy thing and it's the second child thing. It's, it's like a combination of both. <laughs> yes, yes. That's going to be your wild child. Um, but also, you know, they didn't have a phone until they were 16, almost 17 years old. Yeah. I was that mom. In this generation. See, I want to do it, but we got her this watch thing where she could, but she could only call um, me and her Oh, that's mom, that's different. Her, I'm talking yeah. about like open I, I did it more out of, you know, the world's a little crazy now, so it I did is. it more out of a protection thing because it tells us exactly where she is. And, yeah. You know, she could call us if she needs to. A lot has changed in just the last five to seven years. Mm -hmm. So well, I don't. We were walking in here. You heard her talking. Yeah, she was cute. She was cute. Her little voice. She was ready. She was ready to come home when yeah. she. Because <laughs> I usually pick her up at this time. <laughs> oh, she was ready. She was ready for you. And you're all the way in Orlando. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so getting back onto your album Caribbean Boulevard. Yeah. Um, why? What you you said you earlier that you named this album after where you're from. Yeah, I seen uh, um so I seen that interview with the City Girls and um EFN and it was on Drink Champs, I think. Um I don't know if I'm allowed to say the name of another okay. podcast. That's cool. It's okay. Okay, yeah, so it was on Drink Champs and I watched it and it was a clip that went viral where they're talking about Miami and you know, EFN is from our side of town, from down south. So it's like they were talking about this clip basically saying like, you know, down south is not part of Miami or it's not part of Dade County is what they said. What yeah. county is it then? All right, so it was an uneducated thing. And I know they didn't yeah. do it on purpose and it's not just them. So the reason I wanted to touch on it, I had the album name something else and I pulled this out like last minute to make it name this because of I seen that. And I was like, you know, it's something that bothers me and it's not just them. It's like a way that Miami really does think. Like if you're from, Southwest 8th Street down, it's like they don't consider you Miami or they think like we live on farms or something. Like, I don't know what they really think. <laughs> so as like, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, I'm trying to shed a light on down south and the artists down south and the thing, the clubs down south and what we have, because it's no different from, you know, the rest of Miami. So, yeah. you know, that's that's really what made me name it that. And that's the street I was born on. And I mean, not born on, but that's the street. I grew up on as a as a child. So. Nice, and you're, the there was a picture of you sitting on on the exit. that sign. That yeah. You, <laughs> what made you go with that design? Um, because you look very small compared to the sign. I noticed the sign. We had to make it look realistic. If I was standing on the sign, I'd be okay. You know, okay. I'd be small. But you know, some people would be like, "Nah, put me big." You yeah, know, I want to look big. I didn't even want to be on the the cover originally, and my graphic designer. I think it's dope. Yeah, he said I should be up there, so. Well, you're definitely paying homage to 
where you're from, um, and it's in big, bold letters. What's your favorite track on this album? My favorite track is nobody's favorite track. Nobody's favorite. <laughs> yeah, nobody agrees. With me. My favorite track is Chose. Chose. Yeah. I have to go back and listen. And, it has and a, disagree. Let me go disagree. No. It has like a good, it has a feel good vibe to me. I don't know. I like. So why why are people disagreeing with you about? I don't know. I don't think like the, just not as a favorite. Like you know the oh. fan favorites are like um, you know a lot of like Dead Man Walking and and and. Um, Little Man and obviously Rick Ross record, the Gucci Man record, the Trina record. Like people, there's a lot, I guess, bigger records on there that people like. And then like all my old school hip hop heads like like uh, Man's World, you know, so. <laughs> yes. So you kind of just trying to, when you were um, going through and, put, you know, making all these tracks with all these artists, what was it like working like with Ricky Rose and, and, and working with that song and then seeing this whole project come to fruition we we've had a relationship for a long time so you know i'm just glad that we finally were able to put something together and hopefully we could get a video done and and do more but you know uh after i dropped a few days we went to live club live with him and hung out so <laughs> in the lab. Yeah, yeah yeah so you know i'm just you know he's always been um a mentor and he's a great leader you know Oh, man, I've been around his team for a long time. So, you know, like I said, Lex obviously runs with, with Rosé, and that's like my big brother. So Nice. Yeah. So when you saw this project coming through, and you're, how is it when you're trying to decide on the type of flow or what you want to go on that album? So it makes sense. The music is the fun part. So the music, we just... You know, I go in with like a couple of my guys, we just vibe, have fun, make a record. Sometimes I'm by myself. I have a studio in my house, so sometimes I'm just by myself. And if I'm feeling something or somebody sent me a beat I like, you know, it's just I I cook all year and I, I drop on August uh, for my birthday every year. So I drop August 11th because it's the birthday of hip hop. So I've been doing that for like, I want to say the last like five years or something like that. Uh, this year was the first time I was late. I had to do with some of the legal issues with the clearances and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, with the dis distribution. But uh, we got it out, like, I think, like, two weeks later. So. Okay. Initial, it, your so. initial date is, you know, still there, and you can always... Yeah, always and I could have probably still got it out on time, but I had my whole birthday week planned. We were in Tampa. We were, you know, like, party at the party and show and, you know, all types of stuff, so... <laughs> You gotta yeah. do it big. Go big or go home. Um, you have Jada Kiss. You have uh, Joe Gifted, Gucci Man. Um, I mean, yeah. iconic, <laughs> iconic names. Yeah, this is my biggest project to date. I'm you know, just getting started with this one, so definitely want to drop a couple videos and and you know, gonna push this out all year until the next one. Right. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to top this one as far as the features, but well, you never know. You never know what comes. You know, there's always room for additional growth because you're always pushing forward. So, yeah. um, twenty five or twenty fifth anniversary at State Farm Arena, yes. the concert you did with uh, my favorite Ball Greasy. <laughs> Listen, I love Ball Greasy. Shout, shout out to Space Marketing. Just love it. Uh, yeah, Trick, Plies, Rick Ross, Juvie, Pastor Troy. Yeah. I hadn't heard that name in a minute. Yeah. It's a lot of people. So the tour is set up. I, the way Space does it, I think, like, he has, like, people from the city. Like, when we were in North Carolina, they had Petey Pablo. You know, like, so it's like whatever city we kind of go to, he has artists from that city. And then he has the main headliners, which is Trick, Trina, Plies, um, uh, Juvenile, Goody Mob. I love Goody, Goody Mob. Mob. CeeLo was out there. It was, oh, you know, stop. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Webby. I don't want to forget wow. nobody. <laughs> no, it's hard. It's hard. When you're sitting here interviewing and you're trying to remember so much in such a short span of time, you're bound to forget. It's not intentional. Yeah, not intentional. Forgive me. But yeah, a lot of legends. Definitely legends. Like people I grew up listening to were all on the tour. We're all backstage rubbing shoulders. Like, uh, you know, I got to meet a lot of people I didn't know, so you know, and get cool with them, so. Is this your biggest audience you've ever performed in front of? Yes. Did you get scared? 
No, I didn't get it. <laughs> You're like, nah. Nah, I didn't nah. get scared. You didn't get any kind of nerve I, butterflies? I love the, the studio and the stage is, I think, where I feel most comfortable. Yeah. Really? That's, yeah, that's where I have, like, that's the fun part for me. Ah. Like, that, those two things right there is like, that's what makes it all worth it. It's your mm-hmm. Super Bowl, so to speak. Yeah. That's your Super Bowl moment. Game day. Game day. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm. um, when you stepped out on the stage, did you, who did you, the lineup, were you opening for some, for, for one specific person on this tour? No, I was or? just, I was, um, I think I was the first act. Oh, see, JT Money. After. JT so, Money. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. like, I think I, I would start the show off and then JT Money and then so on and so forth. We would, they had their lineup set, so. So yeah, I was like the opener. There would be some acts before me, but like Mm -hmm. when the show would start, I think it would usually start at seven. It would start with me, JT, and then uh, so. Okay, so going first. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) You know that's like for me. Okay, I don't. You know, I don't think about it when I'm on television. It's a little different. But if I'm going through a haunted house, like at you know Universal Studios, you know whatever. For, for, for Halloween. I am not going first and I am not going last. <laughs> it's just it. Those yeah. are the most nerve wracking positions. I'm going to be in the middle somewhere. You don't, you got to be an opener or a closer, but in between it is super important too, because they got to keep that momentum going through the show. But that opening act. Yeah. Mm. You got to set it off. You got to set it off right. Get the people out. <laughs> did, uh, and how did the crowd, crowd's reaction make you feel after the end of your performance? I think out of all of them, I think Jacksonville showed the most love. Duval. Jacksonville, that one was crazy. Like, bro, it was like, all the lights were out. <laughs> wow. Which, which stadium, where'd you play um, on? That, that was Vice Star. Vice Star, okay. Vice Star Stadium. Got you, got you. Wow, wow. wow. Yeah, that one was lit. That was like the most lit one, I think. Atlanta was super lit, too. Um, we did the Hawks Arena. I forget what it was called. I think it was State, State Farm. Farm. State, State Farm, Farm Arena. Arena. Yeah. yeah, that's a big arena. Yeah, that is something. Was it filled? It was filled. It was dope. And uh, I'm walking backstage. I'm looking at all the, the locker room stuff because I'm a big like, sports fan. So yeah. I'm like, <laughs> wow. So I was kind of a double, like a nice. Even though they beat them, you know. <laughs> Thirty bird. Um, all right. Before we go, because we're gonna get to wrap it up here. What's one thing that most people don't know about you? Hmm. Most people, hmm, what do they not know? I, mean, I guess some people would know, but I'm, I'm a big businessman. Like besides uh, music, I'm, I'm really big on business. So um, I, I own a tax office called Yes Taxes in Miami. Nice. And yeah, that's like one of my, you know, one of my main businesses that, that funds a lot of other things. Um, I also, you know, we rent jet skis. I have a Sprinter service business. So I'm into a lot of business and finding new streams of income. I'm like always challenging myself. I don't really get comfortable. Like, you know, like once I get comfortable, I got to make it hard for myself. Again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You have to have, well, you know, multiple streams of income are a thing now. It's not, you know, you just have your one traditional job anymore and you're set for life. Yeah, it's just spe- not. Especially not in Miami. <laughs> the cost of everything and all the tolls, <sighs> you know, we're feeling it here in Orlando and I don't know how y'all do it. Every road is a toll road down there. Yeah. I swear. Yeah, I um, that's interesting. So you do taxes. Have you? Do you give out like? Have you ever given out like I don't know an album or something like that to somebody? <laughs> no, I separate the two. Separate like I mean, a lot of my friends know me, so they know like our oh, family okay. that would come in. But uh-huh. but other than that, um, no, I separated. Like some of my cl- matter of fact, I think like two years ago, one of my clients was like, I didn't know you rap. I heard your song on the radio. You never told us. Because I don't, I don't even look like the dirt tax season. It's, you know, yeah. I'm dressed up. I mean, the button up is slacks, and, you know. Wow. Wow, that's like a night and day kind of thing. <laughs> but that's great. It's also good knowledge. Because, yeah. first of all, they don't teach you that in high school. They don't. Second of all, when you have a business, I'm sure, you know, you probably have somebody that does it for you. But knowing all the details behind tax preparations and yeah and, so, so after after i got a bag it was like uh i took like i don't want to say i took time off because i was still dropping music mm-hmm. but i wasn't going as hard as i usually do because i was trying to come up with a lucrative business like something that wouldn't take all my time away from music and then 
it would still give me enough money to do the music. And also, you know, like after I got a bag, there was like only so much money left that it's like you either keep swinging the bat to hit a home run, another home run, or it's like, you know, you find something that will sustain you. And taxes came to mind and it was something that, you know, I know people need every year. I work four months out the year mm -hmm. and, you know, I got the rest of the year to be free to do music. Nice. You know, so it, it just made sense, really. Yeah. And do you like it? Yeah, I like it. It's fun. Do you? I like the numbers. It's cool. Some days I don't. <laughs> I'm going to ask you that same question at the um, around week three of tax season, and we'll see how you feel about it. Well, actually, no, week no. three, I'm having fun. Week three? Okay. It's so the you... end. It's the end. Like around April, that's, all the people that find the, the, the deadline is, yeah. no, that's you that's where it's not light? fun no more. You can't see the light yet? <laughs> no. That's when all the, the problematic, the headaches, the more complicated work comes to the end. Everybody rushing in the beginning is like easy. They're just trying to get some money. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's like everybody that comes at the end has major problems. They've been waiting to see you because they don't. They It's as hard for them as it is for you. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. you know, you're towards the end, you get more people that got to pay back and they got multiple businesses and streams and it's longer returns, stuff like that. You're like, listen, could y'all start coming in at the beginning of April with it, or just drop your stuff off and I'll, I'll do it for you. I'll call you when it's yeah, done. Yeah, and, and then I take a vacation every year. The, the, the April 15th or whatever the deadline will be this year, with, when it hits, I'm gone for two weeks. I'm not picking up the phone. And then, and then I'll get back to it. You're like, wow. Yeah, because yeah, because then you have people who file extensions. And, yeah. Oh, man, that's good. That's a, that's a good one. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's gonna be a good one when they start seeing you. <laughs> when they start seeing you out on the street and they're like, wait a minute, you're rapping and you're doing taxes. Yeah. My God. I think in Miami a lot of people know now, but like overall, no. That's cool though. Well, where can people, you know, find out about what you're working on, what you're doing, where you're gonna be performing, where can they find you? I'm most active on Instagram. So you can follow me on Instagram. All my social media handles are at Smiles Official, except for I wanna say TikTok. And YouTube will be Real Smiles Official. Real Smiles. Real Smiles Official. Any underscore or anything? Or no, together? everything's together. And then, you know, if you Google me, Smiles Official, it's a lot of content on there. YouTube is a lot of content. Um, my website, smilesofficial.net. Um, you get merchandise and stuff on there. Shop with your boy. Grab a shirt or something. <laughs> Grab a shirt or something. Grab the album. Where is it available? On all streaming platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, uh, Tidal, whatever, Deezer, um, Amazon Store, wherever you want to get it, it's available. Caribbean Boulevard. Caribbean Boulevard, putting the South on the back. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming here, chopping it up with me. I greatly appreciate you. It's been a blast. Thank you. I appreciate it. This and I'm sorry for the cringy messages before I actually knew you on the <laughs> it was, I didn't even think they were cringy. I, I really just thought you were being funny. Like, I was like, oh, that, you I'm know. She's like, funny. Because I'm like, I'm like, bro, she, you know, like, um, she sees the Jamaican in my bio, so maybe she's sending me funny Jamaican stuff. So I'm like, it's just so weird of somebody to do, you know? Like, so, I'm glad you're cool with it, though. I was a little cringy confused but i was like you know like, okay. it is what it is this is the new social era for yeah, sure isn't yeah. it you have over 365,000 followers i've seen a lot crazier stuff in the world. It's just, I, I didn't think that was weird at all there's stuff that is weird well it is the reason why we're here and <laughs> yeah. it's a story that i'm going to enjoy telling people and no matter how embarrassing it is Definitely. So. You now i know where to check in when i'm in orlando yeah, exactly exactly you're always welcome always hit us up here you've got your second home in orlando so well thank you so much for coming on the show and you guys stay locked in tight um i will be back with another episode dropping to you soon thanks for listening to riff on this and a huge thank you to our special guest all the way from miami smiles official we appreciate you making that drive to be on the show be sure to follow him on his social media by searching smiles official and don't forget you can link me on my social media just search samara coquinas news six on facebook on instagram search samara coquinas and before we go a huge thank you to our behind the scenes production team Derek mosier ryan haley Philip Deems, Ivan Diaz, and Bob Myers. Please take some time to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And don't forget, sharing is caring, so tell a friend about us too. You can find videos of all the podcast episodes on clickorlando.com slash riff on this. Until next time, friends.